One of these days I'm going to remove these intros from these videos. How are you doing? I saw a thread and I was pointed to a photography thread where it completely went off the rails. It just had an enormous amount of responses because everybody was fighting back and forth and then it got maxed out at like 150 uh, postings and so they started it up again and everybody's fighting with one another. And uh, this video, by the way, is not about micro contrast. However, they are connected. There's actually several uh, variables of image fidelity. Micro contrast is a horrible word. Everybody loves uh, using the reference ETTR, expose to the right. Well, that's wonderful, but it's far less than comprehensive in what it actually is. Should be accurately called sensor saturation. I've stated endlessly, and there's not a single one of you out there. However, a famous YouTuber tried. He said I was wrong. <laughs> but he never gave any justification for it because there is none. Because there's no downside to the sensor saturation. You need to make your lighting the way you necessitatively want it to be. Like if you wanted some rim lighting and you wanted most of the shot dark, that's understandable. So you need to get your lighting right. I'm not talking about the lighting ratios of the actual composition, but instead of calling it ETTR, People say, well, what's ETTR? And they say, well, exposed to the right. That still doesn't give you what it is. When you say sensor saturation, that is a much more clear definition when you actually say, um, instead of saying micro contrast, which is a, a totally nonsense, nonsense word, it has to do with image fidelity. Yeah, I don't know if you ever heard a binaural stereo uh, audio recording. They're absolutely mind-blowing. If you've never heard a stereo audio recording, you should probably download one. You've got to put your headphones on to listen to it. Wow, phenomenal. I used to have uh, some insanely expensive microphones, and I make some recording. Man, they just blow your socks off. Unbelievable. That would be uh, like audio um, fidelity. Everybody's heard of audio fidelity, right? Well, it's image fidelity. But there are several factors that actually... Uh, affect uh, sensor saturation as they affect uh, image fidelity. Um, flash is the big one. People, everybody knows, most everybody knows, when you take a flash shot, it's like, wow, that shot looks just a lot richer. You can step outside and it's be blasting sun. And the sun is just, uh, you know, bursting dead on to your subject that you're taking a shot of. Isn't that wonderful? And yet it still won't compare with the one fifteen thousandth of a second xenon burst from the cheapest speed light, or even a studio strobe. It doesn't matter if it's a speed light or a studio strobe. They're all the exact same bleeping thing. The only distinction is the power output and the type of light mods that you could freaking attach to it, how far away you can get from your... They're all xenon tube devices. Let's repeat that again. Xenon tube devices, the most expensive Ellen Chrome to the cheapest frigging Godox. They're all xenon tube devices. So here's the real question that none of these uh, goofy little YouTube photography channels explain. Just say, ask them, says, well, why does a flash shot look better? Everybody says it looks better. Nine times out of ten, so wow, this shot looks like it's taken with a flash. It looks better. Why does it look better? You could do ETTR with ambient light photography and bring your shot to the edge of the clipping point. Well, you could do the exact same thing, the exact same level of exposure with a speed light or a studio strobe. Why does a speed light shot look better outside of the fact that you have superior control over white balance? We're not talking about white balance. Why does it look better? There's not a single one of those YouTube photography channels that will actually give you the explanation to that. There are many variables to sensor saturation. And the one thing that I keep repeating that the one YouTuber said I was wrong on, but of course he couldn't prove I was wrong on because I'm right, is he said, no, no, no sensor saturation is uh, not always best, but the thing that I actually said over and over again in many different videos is that you actually saturate in your camera and then you actually expose in your computer. That's so important I have to repeat it two more times. And ask yourself that question. Don't take my word for it. Use your own brain. Ask other people. Well, that fat, bald, tattooed guy said, is he right? Well, of course I'm right, but you know, you debate it. Debate it with me? Fine. Debate it with your friend. You know, the fat, bald, tattooed guy says, you should saturate in your camera. I don't care what camera it is. I don't care what the dynamic range your camera is, medium format, crop sensor. Don't care. You should saturate in your camera and expose in your computer.
This is also, too, is the reason why you should be shooting raw. Yeah? You don't have a lot of options with a JPEG image, which is already cooked. Right? You could have a lot of dough and make a thousand different things with it, but if it's cooked, it's a JPEG. can't do a lot with it. So why should you actually saturate in your camera, but expose in your computer? I'll just let you think and debate that with me or with your friends. Here's a question. Is more information better or worse? So very important. More information better or worse? More information better, right? Let's say you're taking a shot of this fireplace, yeah? Now I could just expose for the highlights, or I could, uh, don't, I'm never talking about clipping highlights. I'm never, ever talking about that. Or, you know, I could spot meter anywhere here, and I could do what I know works, because everybody has their own way of how they meter. Most people are lazy, and they shoot aperture priority, and they just matrix meter, which is fine, as long as you know the amount of exposure compensation that you need. It's like, well, I'm in a, I'm in a spot meter for my highlights. I'm going to raise it up a stop and a third because that's the clipping range, dynamic range of my camera. Well, that's fine. So what is the advantage of more information? Is there a downside to more information? That's almost a trick question. Is there any downside to having more information in your RAW file, especially when it comes to the shadows? Yeah. Have you ever just done and let the camera choose because your camera wants to turn everything into a, a gray baby paste? Just spot meter the highlights and let it rip. You notice that the shadows are muddy and that they're unsaturated and they're undetailed and it looks uncontrasted. It looks flat. Yeah, it looks like gray paste on a gray background on a gray overcast day. That's how your shadows look even when you raise them up, right? You know exactly what I'm talking about. So instead of like staying, for example, spot metering on the highlights, I actually raise it up a stop and a third, whatever the dynamic range of your camera is. Never talking about clipping the highlights. When I raise up the amount of information that I'm allowing the camera to get, I'm saturating the sensor. You ever the old saying that a rising tide raises all boats? Well, a rising tide raises the highlights, and it also, too, raises the amount of detail captured in the raw file in your shadows. This is not my opinion. This is a hardcore, empirical, undeniable fact. So let me ask that question again. Is there any downside to sensor saturation? Not talking about clipping highlights. Yeah. And you need to light it. Now, of course, you're an ambient light photographer. We're not talking about lighting. We're talking about sensor saturation, but the same applies with flash photography. We're not talking about clipping any highlights, whether it's ambient light photography or flash photography. So is there any downside to sensor saturation? Because when you have sensor saturation, correct me if I'm wrong, you're collecting more data in the highlights and the shadows. If you're exposing, for example, your highlights and other stops, stop and a third, stop and a half, whatever your camera's dynamic range will allow, are you not also, by increasing the exposure vis-a-vis -vis aperture or shutter, the amount of information captured in your shadows? The answer is undeniably 100% of the time, yes, yes, yes. So now, once again, what is the downside to more captured info? The answer is none. Sensor saturation equals better image fidelity, even if you're an ambient light photographer. And I can't use a flash. I'm shooting indoors. I'm just going to meter for my highlights. Yeah, but what sort of exposure compensation are you going to dial in for your highlights? Well, maybe none, you know? I'm just going to shoot for my highlights, make sure I don't clip them. You should know the clipping highlights of your camera. That's the one thing every professional photographer is supposed to know. Well, I know how to use my camera perfectly. Well, you don't really if you don't know what it's uh, clipping, uh, clipping highlight uh, dynamic range is. You know, you say you spot me to the highlights and I'm going to go, yeah, but how many stops above that? Or half a stop or a third of a stop? Will your camera let you do without blowing the information in your highlights? I don't know. Well, you don't really understand your camera very well, do you? Sensor saturation always equals a superior image. And we're not talking about lighting ratios versus shadows versus highlights with flash photography and the other sort of photography. We're talking about more information captured. When you capture more information vis-a-vis -vis sensor saturation, you're capturing more information in the midtones, the highlights, and the shadows. Period. It's like a rising tide raises all ships. Undeniably so. 
There are several factors that actually influence image fidelity. There's uh, whether you're using flash photography or not. There's the nature of the lens. Does it have a billion elements in it? Does it actually destroy low gain intertonal detail, which is SNR, by the way, signal to noise ratio. Uh, pixel pitch and the efficiency of your sensor, yeah. Also, to the analog to digital algorithms and the signal processing information, which you cannot actually change that. You can't, those are non, non influenceable elements of your camera. It's just the nature of the freaking camera that you have. And you can have a, a flash photo. Here's the juxtaposition. A flash photo using the best image fidelity lens with the best a pixel pitch. But if you don't saturate the uh, sensor on the shot, then you'll still end up with a muddy flat image. Let me repeat that because it's so important and not another YouTuber will ever mention that because they don't really know how a camera works. They don't. You can use flash photography. Use the best low element count, high image fidelity, micro contrast, micro contrast is the nonsense term, best image fidelity lens that exists, which we could argue about which one that is. And the best uh, SNR, large pixel pitch, large eyeball sensor, like a medium format GFX, 50R, for example. Flash photo, a 45 millimeter GF lens, which is incredible image fidelity on the uh, GFX sensor, but if you don't saturate the sensor, your shadows are still muddy. Not muddy, I mean, it's not a bad image. But sensor saturation affects and improves everything. More information, more better. That's so important to remember in photography, relational to sensor saturation. They have to say it two times more. More information, more better. More information, always more better. This is the only thing, people really have stopped arguing about whether larger sensors gather more light. <laughs> I've made like 30 videos on that, but larger sensors don't gather more light. They don't work like picture windows. Sure they do. There's still some people out there that believe that nonsense. But it's not true. Just as more light does not fall on your head when you're in a bigger state as opposed to a smaller state. Because exposure is per unit area. Larger sensors don't gather more light. The only thing that collects more light is a, a solar panel, but a solar panel only outputs one thing, power. An image sensor and a camera inputs millions and millions and millions of little different points and intensities and colors of light. It doesn't output one thing, which would be, be connected to more light. More light and sensor size are not connected in photography. <laughs> That's not my opinion. That's a fact, even though the largest Photography channel, I say that loosely, says, You larger sensors gather more light. Guy doesn't know how a camera works. <laughs> I'm going to edit that part out of this video. <sighs> I'm glad I could stick a little humor into this video. Oh man, this is some good stuff, even though it's really bad for me. Zero calories. It's got all sorts of cancer-causing chemicals in it. Not really. It's actually pretty healthy. Well, not really. <laughs> it's got a lot of caffeine in it. Yeah. Uncle, Uncle Kenny likes caffeine. Tattooed monkey, a.k.a. Uncle Kenny. That's right. He likes caffeine. Yep. Yes, indeedy. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Oh, man.